Cucumbers. It was still early in the day, and the warm desert sun felt pleasant against the side of his face. As he drove along, he struggled to tune in a radio station, but his old truck had only a coat hanger for an antenna, and he could only barely catch anything, and he couldn't barely catch anything more than crackled voices. He had been driving nonstop since eight in the morning, and his bladder was beginning to strain, so he slowed down and pulled off the side of the road. Once at a stop, he checked quickly behind to make sure no one was coming, and carefully hid himself behind the open door. As he stood there, he examined the large crates of cucumbers he was hauling. April was cucumber season, and he would be able to fetch quite an impressive price for his cargo at market. They had been purchased cheap from a friend of his in Jordan, and Jordanian cucumbers were known to be the best. All you had to do was peel them and add a sprinkle of salt. He remembered back when he was a little boy, children were not allowed to bring cucumbers to school during April. The smell of the freshly cut fruit was so overwhelming, it was considered cruel and insensitive to the children whose parents could not afford them. When he finished, he adjusted his trousers, climbed back into his truck, and continued up the empty road. He hadn't been able to fit the entire load in the back, so one of the crates was resting beside him on the passenger seat. They were the thin Persian variety, and several were so small they had escaped from the slats and were now rolling around playfully on the floor. One began making its way dangerously close to the accelerator, so he leaned down, grabbed it, and chucked it out the open window. He watched as it flew through the air and hit the sand. Immediately, he felt guilty. So many people were going without fresh produce at all. These days, even boiled cabbage was a luxury. Why, there wasn't a child on his street that wouldn't sweep several courtyards in exchange for that one skinny little cucumber. After driving another 25 miles, he reached a checkpoint. There were three U.S. military Humvees parked in front and several American soldiers with machine guns standing beside them. About 10 feet away, a group of Iraqi soldiers were leaning against an old Land Rover, chatting casually amongst themselves. He slowed down, and when he was close enough to see their faces, he waved a friendly greeting at the Iraqis. By this time, the men were standing at attention, waiting to check him through. They eyed his truck suspiciously as he pulled up, and he began getting nervous, but the first soldier to approach his vehicle immediately spot, smiled upon noticing his goods. Oh my, what do we have here? He said, bending over and admiring the bountiful crates. Fresh cucumbers. What my wife wouldn't do to serve a fresh cucumber salad with dinner tonight. And so he parted with the crate next to him on the seat, plus two more from the back. And he was not only treated kindly in return, but they didn't even bother making sure it was only cucumbers he was hauling. Instead, they cheerfully waved him through and wished him good luck at market. When he reached the crossroad just before the border, he pulled over and got out. He was supposed to be met exactly at 11, but he was five minutes early. There wasn't a soul in sight, so he lit up his cigarette and stood waiting. The desert had heated up considerably by then. So he went and fetched a plastic tarp from behind his seat, then draped it hurriedly over the exposed crates. As he was tying down the corners, he looked up and noticed the dusty trail of the car quickly approaching. His heart started beating fast, but he continued on with his task as if it wasn't there. When he looked up again, the car was close, enough for him to recognize it as Ali's primer gray Land Rover. At once, he relaxed and stood up. Ali greeted him warmly, then went straight to the back of the truck. After briefly commenting on the beautiful cucumbers, he threw up the tarp, pulled aside the top crates, and exposed three large wooden boxes hidden underneath. Each measured three by seven and was nailed firmly shut. They quickly loaded these into the back of the Land Rover without saying a word the entire time. Then Ali pulled a heavy, envelope from his breast pocket and handed it over. After receiving two crates of cucumbers, Ali said farewell and left. A minute later, Ali's car was out of sight, and once again, the road was empty. He held the, the heavy envelope in his hands for a moment, then opened it. Inside, there was a stack of euros, two inches thick, held together with a rubber band. 
Wrapped around this was a neatly handwritten letter in ink. He quickly returned the money to the envelope and slid it behind the front seat. Then he lit another cigarette, leaned against the truck, and read. My dearest Wally, I hope this letter finds you safe and well. I will get straight to business as I know this is of utmost concern to you right now. The 19th century Tabarese, four by six and utterly breathtaking, was auctioned last month at Suff Suffbees for 35,000 euros. The four gabbets, two lines, one floral, one geometric, I took care of myself, working with dealers directly online. The lions both went to a, a small shop on the Via Marzo in Venice, a Swiss dealer whom I actually met years ago at a conference in London. Each piece went for uh, 10,000 euros. The geometric and floral sold for 12,000 a piece. The rose pattern is Fahan, unspeakably lovely, and by far the most precious of the collection, went to Dr. Bracken at the British Museum, who sends his best to you and your family. We had to haggle a bit on this one, but finally settled on 65,000 euros. I admit it's a bit low, and I probably could have squeezed more out of the old chap, but I knew you would have done the same in my shoes, having been so fond of him yourself. The Malayer Camel Hair Runner and the Halvai Bijar Runner both went to a German attorney redecorating his family estate. They sold for 28,000 and 32,000 respectively. The money has been distributed as follows. Kathleen received a check from me last Tuesday for 100,000 euros. I wired Kevin Harturian 44,000. 14,000 went to partially cover the yearly maintenance fees on the Lowell Street flat. As you know, I insist on accepting nothing for rent, and Kathleen and Nadia may live there as long as they wish. But not, um, I'm sorry. But Kathleen begged me to at least take something and I promised her I would. 12,000 went to Ali for his services. The remaining 34,000 I have enclosed for you. Please contact me immediately if any of this goes against your wishes and I will do my best to correct the matter. Astrid and I flew to London last week and saw Kathleen. Nadia looks more and more like you every time I visit. I have enclosed a photo from our trip. She is doing quite well in her studies and is apparently top of her class in both French and German. I made a quick stop by Amwell Street. I walked by your old store, which is now a flower shop, something which made me very happy. The mood on the street has changed, though. There is suspicion everywhere, especially with the European collectors like myself. Old Mr. Alfaki wouldn't even say hello. This soul-crushing mess has ruined everything, but you know quite well how I feel. Expect to hear from me within a week regarding our next exchange. Ali has kindly offered his assistance going forward for a rather generous fee. I hope I have lived up to the trust you have placed in me. Your friend, Walter Langen, Sils Maria. Tucked behind the letter and carefully wrapped in scented tissue, no doubt Astrid's touch, was a photo of a pretty young girl about eight years of age, sitting at a large mahogany table and smiling cheerfully into the camera. Her hair was curly and deep chestnut brown, and yes, her dark eyes and chiseled, chiseled features were unmistakably his. He stood looking at the photo for a minute, then tossed it, his cigarette into the sand. It was going on noon, and if he wanted to sell his cucumbers by three, he had to rush. He climbed back into his truck, placed the photo on the dash in front of him, and continued up the empty road.